Well, we now know there are 24 teams who are going to have a chance to lift the Stanley Cup in 2020. Elliot Friedman on Wednesday night reporting that will be the format moving forward should the NHL return with Elliot top four seeds in each of the East and Western conferences. Yeah, basically what's going to go on here, Arash, is that there will be 12 teams in each conference that are eligible to play. And Chris makes a good point. I don't know if technically these are going to be called playoff games or more of a play-in round. And the way it's going to work is, and this is not by division anymore, it's now by conference. So, for example, in the East, 5-12 will be Pittsburgh versus Montreal. In the West, 5-12 will be uh, Edmonton versus Chicago. This is by points percentage. And it's 5-12, 6-11, 7-10, 8-9, and it will be bracketed. So, you know, you're a big NCAA tournament basketball fan. In the NCAA tournament, the 8-9 winner plays one. The 7-10 winner plays two. The 6-11 winner plays three. And the 5-12 winner plays four. Now, what I don't have the answer to, I know the top four teams are going to play each other in like a mini tournament, three games. I'm not certain at this point as we take, tape this, CJ, as to how it's all going to work with can they move around each other? Is that going to happen? That's a detail I couldn't pin down and I, I didn't want to guess. But what we do know, no reseeding in this playoff format, which, Chris, is significant. It is. And, and look, it sets up as kind of a nice thing. You can make your own NCAA bracket here. And I would expect, Elliot, without knowing that those four teams at the top will at least have some ability to maneuver between them. I think a lot of what's held up and complicated the discussion in recent days as the NHL's return to play uh, committee has worked on this is figuring out the waiting because, you know, obviously when the season was paused, some teams had say a two point advantage, but an extra game played and that type of thing. So, you know, that'll be part of the details here. And we should, you know, really emphasize here, nothing has been finalized. What we have here is the first plan and, and a plan that the, that committee feels it can take back to its constituents, whether that is the NHL team or the NHL players and the NHL PA's executive board is due to have a call on Thursday where they'll talk about return to play matters, including this format. What are the other matters guys that we know that may be discussed on Thursday? CJ? Well, we know what isn't decided yet. And, and even if the format, if there's been a breakthrough or there's at least an understanding here, they might have something that works. I mean, th this doesn't, of course, address testing protocol, hub cities, things like the, the visas for the players and a myriad of other issues. So, you know, we, we should stress too, that this is really specific to how and what this could look like, you know, with, with the return to play format. It also tells us what seven teams won't be coming back, that the, it's, it can focus in on the 24 that are, but there's still a long way to go, even if this format is the one that is adopted. Elliot, is there anything else you know that may be discussed Thursday as the conversations continue? You know, I think that, I think that the, the key things that are going to be talked about here, I do understand that some teams have been talking about how soon can we skate? You know, there was a report in Ottawa that the, the groups might start skating a little bit. I think you're seeing a lot of teams now start to look around their areas. Maybe their facility isn't open, but when can rinks open? When can we start skating? And I think you're going to see a lot of players, especially uh, players that have stayed in North America, uh, whether they're in NHL cities or not, is there a local arena where people can start to skating at, skate at once it's legal uh, in their respective districts. I think that's a thing you're going to start to see talked about too. So much of the conversation too, guys, has been about the hub cities and which markets may end up hosting things moving forward. Elliot, Chris, I mean, we just finished watching The Last Dance. Everybody wants the peek behind the curtain. Uh, three hours ago, we, were, we had another chat that uh, hits the cutting room floor where we talked about how the border is a significant issue, and we know that on, on Tuesday, both governments decided to keep it closed for another month. But pro athletes may and likely will be considered as essential services uh, as employees, but it's the quarantine that ends up being a real significant part in, in this whole conversation and where the hub cities may end up, Elliot. Well, I think that this leaves open the possibility of four or two hubs. Uh, I, we, I don't have an answer on this tonight. I have heard at times that 
I, I really do believe a rash if, if there's still a quarantine when these players are ready to start playing that it's very unlikely that we'll be in Canada. Uh, I think that they, there's been a lot of talk about Canada for two reasons. One, um, you know, it's cheaper with the Canadian dollar. And number two, like some people have told me they do feel a moral, if that's the right term, belief that some of these games should be played in Canada. Canada is very important to the NHL and there should be games here. But CJ, the way I see it is if they can't uh, get, avoid the quarantine, I don't think they're going to play games in Canada. Well, and that's even a factor as they try to move here to phase two, the small group workouts, and even phase three, the, the training camps. You know, I know of uh, players that play on Canadian-based teams that are in the U.S. right now that have been reluctant to travel back to their playing city, not because they don't want to get back and, and get, you know, in position to play, but they don't want it to fly somewhere or drive somewhere and then sit for 14 days before they're even eligible to say to get on the ice if their facility's open. And so you know, I think that there's a lot of players, whether it's those in Europe and, and then, of course, uh, the others spread around North America that are looking for this plan to take shape, to have a sense where the, the ultimately the games will be played and potentially, I guess, if training camps are held somewhere other than their playing cities, which could be complicated by some of those border restrictions. So 24 teams will vie for the Stanley Cup. Officially, the playoffs will be a 16-team uh, format. Uh, so does that mean, guys, the regular season's over? It's finished? I can't tell you. I don't know. I mean, there's some semantics in that. And, and you know, people will want to know, though. There's probably milestones and player bonuses and things that will be impacted. You know, and I'm not sure where that stands. I have to believe it's, it's considered over, especially – if you're moving into, say, a five versus 12 scenario play in, you know, I, I don't see how that's truly regular season, but we'll let uh, the league uh, inform us on that one. Well, Rash, I'll say it. The regular season's over. These are the playoffs. I don't care what the league calls it. These are the playoffs. The, the uh, the, how about the, that? This is the postseason. Yes. This is uh, now, just so you know, one other thing, guys, I should mention I was hearing that if the players and the, and the league and the teams do approve this, I heard the play-in round would be best of five and the rest of the playoffs would be best of seven. At least that's what was the target. Which has integrity, in my opinion, and that's something that the league and Gary Bettman specifically has been talking about since the moment it was paused back on March 12th. I agree. Is there a scenario that a Stanley Cup is awarded with fans in the seats? Or is the hay out of the barn there? I think that's, I think that's really tough. I mean... You know, they've been doing some modeling. Um, you know, if they, if I heard that, like one of our former coworkers, John Shannon, he tweeted out that they were doing modeling that was social distancing. They could get 2,500 to 3,000 people in the building. I also heard they did some modeling with what if it's like a family of four that's allowed to sit together and they would probably get closer to 4,000. Now, the biggest problem I've heard of Rash and Chris is that apparently for every 900 people, you need a mile to line up. And the other question is, we all talk about getting them into the building. Think about how hard it's gonna to be to get them out after a game. Cause you got a social distance on your way out. I gotta think CJ that I can't see. Maybe, you know what, maybe if it's a Stanley cup final, they might let people in like families but other than that, I just, I don't see it. And at this point, you're looking at best case scenario, September for the Stanley Cup final. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not a decision they have to make today. I think the league's been careful not to rule it out as a possibility, but certainly this format, if they can get it off the ground late July, early August is starting without fans. And I think that they're going to have to rely on what's possible from the government and health officials as we get closer to that time. So as Sportsnet's Elliot Friedman reported on Wednesday evening, it will be 24 teams who will have the opportunity to compete for the Stanley Cup should the NHL return in 2020. Thanks, guys.